This example shows how to use Laplace transform to solve a mechanical system and find the transient response. In this case, the mechanical system is a spring mass system with damping coefficient b, uh, proportionality constant k for the spring, and also mass of m. We apply a constant force f of t starting at time t0, and we want to figure out how much is the displacement uh, both for the transient response in terms of how it moves uh, and change as a function of time and also its ultimate value. To do that, we first start with a famous well-known equation of sum of all forces should be equal to mass times acceleration. There are three forces involved, so sum of all forces is just f of t applied force minus k times x of t, that is because of the mass, because of the spring, that applies a counter force corresponding to proportional to the displacement shown as minus k times x of t and then we have damping coefficient that uh, f applies a counter f force corresponding to a speed and that is represented by minus b that is the damping coefficient times the speed which is the first derivative of this displacement equal to mass times acceleration which is the second derivative of x so we just uh, start from this and rewrite that into keeping f of t on um, the only thing in the left hand side and in the right hand side we have mass times second derivative and uh, we have uh, damping coefficient times first derivative and then we have k times the displacement as a function of time of course so this is the point that we can start uh, using Laplace transform to get into s domain from time domain where things are much easier for that purpose uh, we uh, assume that the initial state of the mechanical system was zero, meaning that initial displacement um, is at zero. Things are stable. So assuming f of t or applied force is just a constant force starting from time zero, which is represented by f times ut, then f of s is, of course, the constant f over s. So taking Laplace transform both sides of this equation, Laplace transform of f of t shown here. So we get f over s is equal to m, assuming again initial displacement is zero. So this is m times s square x of s plus b times s x of s plus k times x of s. From this, we get x of s or s domain um, representation of the displacement function is just constant f divided by s times m times s2 plus b times s plus k. Okay, so this is our transfer function for displacement represented in x dom s domain. Let's assume that mass is 1 kilogram. Let's assume that applied force, constant value of the force is 5 Newton. Um, let's assume that the damping coefficient is 4. And let's assume that the proportionality constant of the spring is just 5. All right, substituting for the parameters, we get x of s is equal to just 5 over s times s2 plus 4s plus 5, which can be rewritten as 5 over s times s plus 2 uh, to power 2, and then uh, minus j2, which means it's 5 over s times s plus 2 minus j, s plus 2 plus j. So, just to summarize, we have um, three poles in this system. For denominator, we have S0, that's the first pole, complex conjugate pair of poles. Uh, S2 is minus 2 plus J, and S3 is minus 2 minus J. Okay, so, um, and as expected, these poles are... Uh, on the left-hand side, this complex conjugate pores, 
left hand side of S domain, so it's a stable system decaying over time. So if this is the S domain, then you have one pole zero and the other uh, complex conjugate poles at minus two uh, plus J and minus two um, minus J. So this is J axis. Okay, so we rather than using brute force uh, inverse Laplace transform to get from X of S to X of T, we use partial fraction expansion. So we use X of S is equal to something, a coefficient that we have to figure out over S plus another coefficient that we have to figure out over S plus 2 plus J plus another coefficient we have to figure out over S plus 2 minus J. To find A, uh, we just need to multiply uh, both sides of this. Uh, by the way, X of S is just this guy. Both sides of this by S and then set S to equal to 0, which these two cancel out. So we get A is just um, S X of S when we set S equal to 0. So S times this, meaning 5S over S times S2 plus 4S plus 5, when S equal to 0 for that, these two s cancel out and we get just one so a is one and uh, same thing for b b is now we're going to multiply both sides by s plus 2 plus j so it is s plus 2 plus j times x of s when we set s equal to minus 2 minus j so it is effectively again taking x of s from here it's uh, 5, this is x of s, so it is 5 times s plus 2 plus j over s, s plus 2 plus j, uh, s plus 2 minus j. So this two cancel out, and we set s equal to minus 2 minus j. So if you simplify this, you end up b to be minus j minus 0.5. And of course, uh, because of the nature of the denominator of B and C, that is complex conjugate of each other, C it, doing the same way, you can calculate and you can figure out that uh, C, which is equal to S plus 2 minus J times X of S, when you set S equal to minus 2 plus J, is equal to uh, complex conjugate of this one, which is plus J minus 0.5. Okay, so with these values, um, our partial fraction expansion uh, substituting for A, B, and C is X of S is just um, 1 over S plus um, minus J minus 0.5, S plus 2 minus plus J, J minus 0.5, S uh, plus 2 minus j. So from here, this is Laplace transform of u of t, so x of t is effectively ut, u of t, which is the step, unit step function, uh, plus um, u of t for the rest of it as well. Rest of it, you have s plus 2 plus j, so, and you have these values, so you end up with minus j minus 0.5, e to the minus 2 plus j times t for the first guy and for the second guy you have j minus 0 0.5 times e to the minus 2 minus j t all right so if you further simplify this you can see it resulting x of t i'm going to factor out the overall ut one and then if you further just simplify this, knowing that using the well-known Euler equation, e to the jt is just cosine t plus j sine t. Okay, so using that, then you end up with 1 minus uh, e to the minus uh, 2t cosine t plus 2 sine t ut. Okay, so we basically found the transient response and uh, the time domain representation of the displacement. And from there, we can see that 
x of the displacement at time approaching infinity is um, just 1. This, this component goes away. Basically, displacement at time infinity is just one unit, a steady state. It gets to. And then you can see that the displacement at time 0, uh, sine of 0 is 0, so cosine of 0 is 1, e to the 0 is 1, so 1 minus 1 is 0. This is expected because we initially we assumed for the whole thing we wrote that initial condition of the system is 0, meaning that initial displacement should be 0, which is also satisfied with, by this finding. Hope this example illustrated how to use Laplace transform uh, to find the transient response of a mechanical system and solve the mechanical system. Thank you.